us. You were also involved in this, I think. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, but also it was. Yeah, 91. Uh, yes, yes. Eric Voigt as well. Uh, I just want to make sure we have the right people here to respond and figure out where we're going with this. Um, I, I just messaged yeah, you. If you're still, see if he's coming. Yeah, if you're still waiting for people, it might be easier to just review the other PRs that are orthogonal, meaning the. Uh, and I believe I addressed people's comments and uh, mine, and then I just started another trivial pass that might be trivial to merge, but uh, uh, on a different pull request. So. Sounds good. Is Ank going to, to, to join today? Because I think 88 is mostly his. No, he hasn't answered uh, Telegram yet. Um, so I um, assume he's indisposed for the moment. <laughs> yeah, I think 112, I'm hoping, will be trivial. Uh, in some places, it was a uh, attestation result in the appraisal policy. In other places, it was attestation results. Uh, you can see uh, watchdog is one word to match the TCG spec um then some places you had like evidence appraisal policy versus appraisal policy for evidence and so uh and then oh it looks like uh the last one got okay i did not intend for that last one to be in the same one uh let me go and uh revert that the cc and rp are not used in text but that's supposed to be part of that other one not this one so let me go and uh, revert those out of this one hold on and so that part is not in the same set as the editorial pass that's in a different PR. Um, You're going to fix this one at 1021. Uh, uh, yeah, 1021 and 1024. I'm going to revert because that's, that's in the other PR. Or, sorry, that's, well, I could put them in here. You're right. It's not in the PR. It's in the issue 111. Um, but uh, can you leave those on the screen for just a second? Will I? Uh, what is it? 1021. Okay. Although I'm happy to leave it in here if people want, but uh, I didn't realize it was in the same request. Just those two are two events that are not even used anywhere in the uh, 88 or 91. So that was uh, point one in my list of six or seven issues and one eleven. Okay, can you refresh? Uh, did I get something wrong? Oh. All right, I got something wrong there. Hold on. Let's do that again. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought this one was cancelled. I don't know why. Yeah. Dave, hey, you're here. That's good. You missed you last time. Uh, yeah, the last one sent out a cancellation notice, so I expected that we were not meeting. So I, since I got actually two so, two different cancellation notices without any updates or notices that they were incorrect, so I assumed that it actually was canceled. Okay. Weird. I'm sorry about that, Dave. Uh, uh, I thought today was canceled. Did you get a did you get a um, cancellation notice? I did not. I thought we agreed that this is basically uh, uh, Independence Day week and also uh, uh, a symposium, and therefore nobody has time. I thought that was the agreement, but maybe that's just my, my memory. It's bad. Um, yeah, there is the um, open source summit that I am on um, Austin time, but it turns out nothing is during this slide. You can refresh again. I'm trying to uh, revert the bottom stuff as being part of it. There we go. Okay. 
Now I think it's just a consistency. There pass. is a talk at 1030, Dave, on 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 secure update, over the air secure update. Um, let me check my calendar. Anyway, when I'm on. Hold on. I don't want to lose you. I want to do that talk um, too. Um, uh, at what time? At 1030, which would be 830, which is after the end of our call, right? My no, time. it's uh, in 20 minutes. What does this call to be? Oh, uh, oh, it's a tutorial. It's a tu that's a tutorial, and the other one. No, because there, there, there is one over the uh, secure boot and over the air updates. I don't know if it's any good, but no, anyway, there, there, there is a talk, um, and I'm trying to remember when it is. That's about the um, critical infrastructure platform, and it talks about secure updates on that one. Can you do you have it handy? Because that one I was going to go as a uh, suit chair, and at the end I was going to ask a question about. Uh, you know what's the relationship to suit to see if they know about it um, and we had a suit chairs meeting the other day and i said hey i'm going to go and attend this one uh, so that i can ask the question at the end and raise visibility of suit but uh i, I do want to make sure it's not the one that's during this call because i did say i was going to be there so me okay yeah. uh, all right any objection to these edits these are i think non-controversial i uh, think has to say he's totally Underprepared, woefully underprepared, unfortunately. So I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, since we just looked at the, we just looked at this, and all this one did, um, uh, Hank was there was consistency. Um, so there was a couple places that we had appraisal policy for attestation result versus attestation policy for attestation results with an S versus uh, test attestation result appraisal policy. And so I try to make those be consistent to always be results plural in 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 all the places. Uh, similarly, in in the uh, TCG spec, it's called watchdog a lowercase, and you can see here it's two different places, two words, one uppercase, one lowercase. And so I try to make it be consistent with the same as what uh, the TCG yeah. spec uses. So that that's. Cool, and, I don't know if I missed any other ones later on. I didn't get to the end, and so I may have a continuation later. But all of these are. Uh, consistency pass, so. It's not interesting. Uh, it's just taking a term that was already used in the document and using it in other places, so. Or, you know, making it consistent, so. Um, that one, I think uh, Greg and I had agreed that this one is obsolete if you look at the conversation. Uh, if you scroll down, you know, I believe it's obsolete by 108, and Greg says, yes, I agree. And so I th think this one is now uh, abandoned because it's kind of merged into the other one. Or it should be, however we do that. And uh, 11 is one where I believe I have addressed everybody's comments, and I don't know if I if people like the way that I've addressed it, but I believe that 11, which uh, had comments on it before, I believe that I've addressed them all, not, not necessarily exactly the same way as people had suggested, but I do want to this, this, You say you said 11, but do you Oh, sorry, 108. 108. Yeah, 108. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, since oh, yeah, this is comments are in outdated sections, yeah. Um, so my complaint was that I thought that we needed that relying party, uh, verify a relying party. I just felt needed a slash or a dash or something in it. Um, it used to say verifying relying party. You can see there in the red 681. And now I put a slash in it, but uh, I did not accept the appraising slash relying party and change it to okay. verifier relying party, which I thought was much more correct. Relying parties also do appraisal, right? So every relying party is an appraising relying party. So that's why I thought this was more clear. Okay. And then the other point that was raised, I think from Hank was uh, try not to use a test as a verb. And I reworded that, which you also see if you scroll up the very first change in this uh, PR now, which is, you know, scroll up, uh, you can see it was already used in uh, there in 275. 
And so I changed like three different places. This is one of them. So I changed the existing places too. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so there was a couple of new cha new changes in this PR because of that comment about a test because it was already used in a couple places. So, but it, the the point seemed valid to me, so I went and looked for them. Okay, so the only changes in here are the ones which have the verifier slash relying party um, was that change, and then the a test not being used as a verb any place in the document. Those are the two changes since uh, since the last time you reviewed it. Um, oh, and you see my response to your aside, but I don't think it's the scope of this PR, but it's an interesting discussion. So I'm asking an architectural question. Is it a requirement on the containers, eat, for instance, that the testers identify what might they what might be PII from their point of view? Uh, it not in the document so far, but it's a valid question to ask. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking, is this an architectural requirement that we explicitly identify PII, personally identifiable information? It took me so, forever to figure out what that PII meant. Um, have we ever discussed that in the working group in a EAT presentation? I can't remember. I don't know if Lawrence has audio. I'm thinking about a situation where um, some identifier um, is used in more than one place um, and um, because of the way it's used in a different place, um, it, it's identifying. So um, I don't know, for instance, a if if a MAC address was used, a randomly generated MAC address was used in some place, um, it might not be PII because it's randomly generated. But when the manufacturer's uh, OUI is used, then it is identifying. And then maybe so, you wind up using that MAC address in some other places an identifier because you didn't have anything yeah, else. So, so, so Michael, that this is this is one of the early questions with the TPM. Particularly, the the EK certificate is signed by a manufacturer, let's say, Intel Corporation or you know ARM, and um, if that certificate or that key pair is used to quote certify to co-sign another device um, key pair, that second device key pair is still uniquely bound to that device, and so when when I use it, say to go shopping you know uh, to to send my bitcoin to yeah so so you know absolutely right it's you know the the other end the recipient the rp is going to be able to correlate all my transactions right and so the question is um here is well is this is this the right layer to talk about pii because it's really device um behavior information versus like personal info for me, for where I live, my address, and so on and so on. Maybe we should just limit the discussion to say, you know, something like, you know, there's a possibility that the device could be re-correlated. And so you could do, um, you know, you know, basically behavioral uh, surveillance. Right. I, I'm not, I'm not really asking about that point. I'm asking is that, so, for example, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good example here. Um, so uh, I will say that in some cases, the uh, model number of the device would be PII. Yeah. So l l let me let me say what Eat uh, did. Um, it doesn't try to define PII or have a, a criteria of like sorting whether this is PII or not. That that seems like that's going to be a problem because of it varies by, by context and a bunch of other things. What the document says is privacy is an issue um, and you have to watch out for it. Um, some things will be uh, privacy violating and some things won't. Um, and if you, you know, the, the solutions to um, the, the privacy issue are either don't send the data, um, ask the user if it's okay to send the data or find a way to anonymize the data. 
and then maybe some particular discussion around the key material because the key keying strategy is that that has just huge implications for privacy yeah. and, and to try to avoid the privacy issues you have to, to, to really uh, i'm not trying to yeah. i'm not trying to have that conversation no but so uh, unclear. I think lawrence's uh answer i completely agree with i think that's a great answer so do i and i don't think and i think that's a motivation for why the answer is no to your question michael could, ah. could we, is, instead of using that, that those three words, personally identifiable information, could we say device identifiable, identifiable information, like DII? Well, That's not so, a well-known so term. So. We don't have a proposed text. The only text here that I'm responding to is that, that a tester must trust entities to which it conveys evidence, that they won't yeah. reveal it, right? And that text was already in there. This just moved here. So that's right. why this is all in a side discussion, right? Right. So so the, the side discussion, in my mind, is if an attester is going to trust another entity to not reveal things that are sensitive, does the data that's sensitive need to be marked as sensitive? Yeah. And I okay. agree with Morrison's answer, which is the it may completely vary by context and so on. And so um, there will be uh, times... I would think where the attester doesn't have to have a clean way to mark it because it may not know the code may not know whether it's PII. It may depend on the context in which that device is deployed. Totally, I, I agree. All right, I, agree. So I think that's what what Lawrence was saying when he said it may vary by context and other things, and so that's why I don't know that it makes uh, sense to try to do that. I, I mean, I can't prove that it doesn't but i'm saying i right now i accept lawrence's answer so yeah that's that's what i'm saying <laughs> okay all right uh so i'm going to uh resolve this for the moment i mean it'd still be worth asking on in a message to the list to see if other people agree with that but uh right now, that. I, I personally accept uh lawrence's answer as a good answer so in my mind, this falls into sort of the opposite of a lot of the uh, appraisal policies that you know can't be dictated in this document. There's you know this is a this is a local policy at the attester as to you know what constitutes PII, what you know under what conditions are they willing to share with whom and so forth. That's sort of you know as as long as it's clear that that's uh, that's a policy choice that an attester can can make and enforce. I think it's about the relying party, the the relying parties, because they're the ones. If it, if it's just one, it's not a big issue. But if you're looking at a set of you know a hundred or five hundred potential relying parties of all sorts of different types, that's that's where you're going to. That's the context that matters. I mean, not the, but the sentence Michael is asking about the seven ten to seven eleven. I think Paul's exactly right. Okay. What, the, what what the uh, the thing that it conveys evidence to is the verifier, right? And so uh, the attest tries to trust them to not reveal sensitive data to unauthorized parties. And so what sensitive data and who are unauthorized parties? I think Paul's exactly right that that falls in the realm of whatever the appraisal policy is gets to dictate that. So let me give you an example where I think it might be useful to have a flag, right? Um, in general, the um, hash or measurement of the firmware is not is not sensitive data um, because everyone's running the same firmware, I hope, right, that has that device. Except in the case when it turns out they're running a beta or something else and there's only six of those people. And so revealing that they're running the beta may be revealing who is there. That's exactly what I meant by saying the model number can be PII. You're, you're, you're just using, a, yeah. because the model number can be equivalent. I'm using the latest model number that's still in beta. That's exactly what I was saying. So. Right. Okay. So latest model that's still in beta, right? So the point is that in general, this is not the thing, but the firmware says, oh yeah, actually I'm a special firmware. So actually I'm telling people what firmware I am yep. reveals something, right? Yep. But normally yep. it wouldn't. And so the right. verifier doesn't know this uh, necessarily. And so it, it I'm asking the question, would it be useful to mark that? So well, that, I think that the attester doesn't necessarily know that either. Well, I, I take your point. The attester doesn't necessarily know that either. Yeah. And some, I, I, I don't know. That's the point I was trying to ask the question. I think it, it's a great question. <laughs> right. I, mean, I, think, I, I think from my perspective, the verifier do the job of privacy preservation by, you know, you can trust the verifier to, to not, 
to to uh, receive uh, PII or or uh, enough information to, to identify something, and then you know it basically acts as a privacy proxy that removes all all of it, uh, so that the relying party uh, doesn't see it. Yeah, that's that's another. I, I I I have checked. The party is tall enough to ride this ride, and therefore I don't have to reveal to you how tall they are. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are we looking at the files view or the comments view right now? It says uh, files view. Huh, because I made changes to that line and it doesn't show up. So I wonder if they got lost. I might have to do it again. The, the attest is a verb. Yes. I know I changed that yesterday. Um, I was going to just uh, ask that. No, uh, I'm going to I'm going to do it again right now. So I'm going to be silent for two minutes while I do the change again. We're we doing a two minute silence for Dave. Yeah. Two minutes of silence. Ha ha. Yeah, I don't think they got committed somehow. Well, some of them did, so. Some of them did, yes. Some of them didn't, yeah. So, Hank, um, there was a, an issue open with Dave's right. comments. About I'm pushing it right now. I want to read. Uh, okay, refresh. Hopefully my speed, I didn't completely mess it up, but. Uh... Well, the comment is gone. <laughs> um, I can. Which, which lines, Dave, did you just fix? Uh, I, that's what I'm just looking up here. Um, one of them was, I believe, seven. Uh, seven there we go. Two and seven sixteen. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Everyone happy with this? These yeah. changes? Uh, did you accept your typo fix there? Because I didn't go ahead and catch yeah, that one. To be, uh... Okay. Um, I'll, while I'm clicking on this, uh, objections to, oh no, oh, there we go, um, to pushing a version today, uh, we fix the 88. Uh, depending on the outcome of that one, uh, I think pushing one, uh, uh, early ship often. So yeah. I, I'm fine with pushing it frequently, so. All right, so, um, Hank, so this is a summary of of uh, Dave's complaints about what we committed. Um, I guess I'll take full responsibility for thinking we were. Yeah, uh, it down. was hasty, which is not good. So there's no I objected about I have, doing it. And I was like, I thought we were, we're okay. Process point, the process that I would like us to follow um, is what I'm yeah. used to, I, I'm used to open source worlds and stuff where you have a set of maintainers and yeah. uh, request changes from a maintainer from a maintainer as opposed to a random uh, reviewer um, means that you don't merge it until either that person has, has removed the request changes or uh, sufficient time has passed to confirm that that person is now unresponsive, so you got to go through an escalation process of right. uh, merging it anyway at the at the consensus of all the rest of them saying, you know, it's been two weeks or whatever, they're completely non-responsive or whatever. So I'd right. like to follow that process where the editors are the maintainers, just that's what I'm used to in open source. Um, and uh, so I, I, I take your point. It's my my yeah, my no mistake in, in, yeah. in judging that, sure. that I, I'm not, uh, I'm not you were happy. Yeah, I'm not trying to put blame or anything. I'm just saying that that's the process I would like us to use going forward. And then we just figure out what to do about this one. So, you know, yeah. I, 
you, you guys are all my friends, so you know I'm not mad at you yet. So <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, let's let's fix this. So I, I'm more annoyed at this uh, one than I am about any particular person. So like I said, I consider all you guys my friends. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, likewise. Also, um, I think uh, we have to fix this. So you, first of all, thank you for this uh, detailed summary. Uh, I'm very sorry to be uh, not to appreciating it enough by having only noticed it, uh, acknowledged it today. And I have not prepared for this meeting, so I did not uh, yeah. address anything. Yeah. So what well, I can do that's is fine, I, I, I only opened it 14 hours ago, right? So. Um... Uh, uh, so uh, I saw uh, it and I would have read it. Yeah. Um, so uh, number one, I think is is easy. And that one I tried to do just by deleting those two lines. Number two is the main one that I think we wanted to talk about here. Because um, I went and looked since I have not so read I'm actually, any document. I'm actually confused. So 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 um, the the comment, the original comment here, right, shows us removing a bunch of stuff and. And, th and then it says this ID is never used in later sections. And I'm actually really unclear on which one it's referring to now. Um, the point was none of them should be you in the table unless they appear in a later section, right? And so that's it why it's not in RP that you're specifically. Th those are the ones even after the merge, right? So you can see in uh, yeah. William Penn Way, May 19 comment there, two down below yeah. my comment. I think Dave's meaning is that the newly added three events are not used in later sections. You can see yeah. out of those three, you know, he's right. Um, then you can see at least one of those was merged without being referenced. And so that was my point number one. So, yeah, that's fine. So we have to okay. fix that. I think that's the easy one. You're correct. Yeah, that one's the easy one. Yeah, well, that's one of the two easy ones. There's another one that's, uh, yes. tri that, that's some trivial typos and stuff. But uh, so, so my question was, the main question I, I have is, is handle distribution specified in some document somewhere yes. i can't i couldn't find one which document is it it is specified in uh, subscription to network devices trusted raft path routing and the reference interaction models um are so any of those a are any of those a working group document because i thought i looked at all the working group documents okay so no, my point about number two uh, yeah. my point about number two is um Two points. Number one, I don't think it's appropriate to replace a synchronized clock section, right? Synchronized clocks is a well-known technique using, you know, Secure NTP, PTP, whatever it is. And there was a section that talks about that that I want to keep. Now, whether there's an additional section that talks about handle distribution, I would be fine with if there's a referenceable something because, you know, nonces are well-known, synchronized clocks are well-known, handle distribution is not well-known. Okay. And right now, if it's only in an individual submission that's not a working group document, I would hold off on merging that until after the working group accepts that handle distribution is in some working group document. That is fine, but I don't want to delay this document, and we are relatively confident that at least to Tuda, which is ages old, but we have no worry about adoption here. Uh, so maybe this is now uh, shooting myself in the foot of some other people, I don't know. Um, uh, I think the most likely document to be adopted is the uh, relatively often referenced uh, <laughs> reference interaction model thingy, which has uh, handle distribution in it. Uh, but, I think so that, I, uh, I, I admit that I have not reviewed. Have the, uh, sorry, there is a resource. Heard... Okay. So there's a restful resource document, the Rift document, the Tuda document, and the subscription to network devices document that will all reference. Uh, the handle distribution stuff from um, from the uh, interaction model, so that is likely to be adopted uh, soon. So I would uh, have that as a milestone dependency here. If you want to have this hold back, uh, we can also prepare text in uh, anticipation. We can leave this up to you. I don't really uh, care. I don't. I only I care about uh, not being a blocker, and that could be a blocking action. Um, yeah, so I admit I have not reviewed any of the handle distribution stuff, so I am not up to speed on any, if there are technical issues or wording issues or whatever, I'm not prepared to vouch for any review of that part yet, since I've not reviewed uh, any of the handle distribution text that's in a document. Now, I remember I've reviewed TUDA a long time ago, and maybe the handle distribution is more recent than that, or maybe I'm just not remembering right, but my point is, um, I guess my preference would be to leave handle distribution text in a unmerged branch until uh, after there's a working group discussion, as opposed to putting into the architecture document that, that has references to things that are not. That's my preference. Um, but my main point is it should not replace the synchronized clock section. Yes, I think the, the, the replacement is uh, a poor choice. 
you are right. Uh, so what we have to do here is to uh, split these, basically re-emerge the old one that uh, maybe add to that, uh, due to Thomas's uh, feedback. He is unfortunately here today. And uh, then um, split this out. I think then there is no uh, contest uh, about what is input here. We have just parallel side by side. That is, I think, way more. Oh, Thomas is here. Intelligent. Oh, Thomas is here. Yeah. So, Thomas, uh, do you remember the old? Uh, sorry for not seeing you. <laughs> uh, do you remember the um, the uh, old uh, synchronized example here that was uh, in the appendix of the architecture? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. I will, I will dig this up. Uh, I will create a PR that is splitting them in two, and then we can compare them next time. So we have a better understanding what are the differences here effectively. And then uh, I think because it's time synchronization, we talked about uh, elaborating a little bit on that in the example, because the example was basically, this is like another example with the exception of two sentences. And that was a little bit uh, slim, I think. Uh, so uh, maybe there was some improvement, uh, room for improvement there. Although I have to admit, I do not really remember right from the top of my head. So would that be okay if we create another branch, which, which I always do but for PRs, that, uh, that we could have them split out again, pull in the old text, I can dig this up, and, and then have a separate text that is not uh, overlapping here with the uh, handle stuff, and then go from there, is that fine? Yeah, that's one with me. Okay. Is that okay with you? Cool. Okay, yeah. Then uh, do we have to go through three, four, five, and a lot of other things? Uh, I can try to address them because I, I skimmed the text, to be honest. I have um, not thought about how to solve it. It looks all solvable to me. So the section about timestamps and synchronized clocks, I want to put that text back in. Yeah, I would put it back in, and I would be happy to uh, add, uh, I don't think it cited anything, I think it would be fine to add a citation to either, uh, you know, an NTP, RFC, or PTP from IEEE, or both, um, as both. examples of clock synchronization protocols. Yeah, I think these are the major ones. And there's also rough time, but... Uh, you know, if we I have, it, it, listing two as examples might be sufficient. But yeah. uh, you know, if, you, if you have three, because if three are widely deployed, I have to, I'm fine with that too. Yeah, rough time is widely deployed because it's centralized. NTP has a centralized problem, and well, you know, so it's it's basically three typically uh, if you want yeah. to have a full it's, scope. But I'm yeah, fine. if you know the reference for it, that sounds fine to me. Sure. Uh, Dave, do you want to go through the other three to eight, or do you want uh, me to have something addressing it first, and then you can bash that hard? I don't understand uh, where where was the section on synchronized clocks removed because I still find a lot of discussion of synchronized clocks so I don't understand that it was um, not it, 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 was it was replaced with text about handle distribution which the clock synchronization protocols that are referenced there um, are not handle distribution protocols and so now it talks about handles being distributed and it talks about what uh, like number four it talks about nonces in the section that's labeled to be about timestamps right. And of course, NTP and PDB don't use nonces, right? They're timestamps, right? And so right now it keeps the section. So once you split into looking, a different I'm section. I'm looking at the PR88, and I don't see text that does that, what you just said. I don't see diffs that yeah. do what you just said. So that's why I'm having difficulty undoing it. I'm also a little bit confused. I think I've not removed any references anywhere, but maybe I'm wrong. But I don't think I would ever remove such a thing. Maybe it was removed in 91. Yeah, that's that. some of the stuff is combined across them. I was looking at the diffs between before and the combined 8891, so I don't remember which is in which one. Sorry. I don't think okay. 91 replaces anything in that space. It just... Yeah, I also don't think so. No. That is weird. I don't know why this is lost. I, I don't remember even seeing a reference to NTP and PTP, I have to be honest. It is not. That's what I'm saying. I would be fine with adding those references. That was never in there. Ah, okay, that makes a lot of more sense because I would never pull content out. Yeah. That is totally not okay. Um, I would just restructure. Okay, so for example, I'm looking at 88 line uh, 1095 is an example. 1095, 1096, 1097. That block right there is uh, changing the meaning of the whole section into a different meaning. Uh, you're looking at, yeah, 88, so 1095. That, that paragraph, right? So you can see it replaced 
requires roughly synchronized clocks with stuff about using centrally identify uh, centrally generated identifiers. For explicit okay. time keeping, which includes ah, and I see what you nonces mean. Nonces yeah. or assigned timestamps. So the nonces or assigned timestamps and centrally generated identifiers is a complete replacement for synchronized clocks and in, in uh, the previous one. And so that's why this right here only belongs in a different section. It does not belong, in my opinion, in the timestamp based section. Yeah, the title is uh, should be a it should be a generalization of the uncompressed bowl, right. but you already agreed to split so the them. So the 1095 through 1097 is for a different section that's more like handle-based background check model yes. example or something like that. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Although so handle-based is a superset of timestamps, so we have some redundancy there, but that's fine if you can start with that. Right, but it's good. a different. The my point is that I believe that example three should reference the standards. And you might have an example, you know, for whatever the number would be, um, that would be handle distribution once there's something you can reference there. And I would have no objection to that as long as it's, you know, a working group document or something that's referenceable. It's fine. So. Yeah, okay, we can do this again. I don't want to be blocking, yeah. but uh, I think before ITF 108, we are not uh, uh, pushing anything to ISG here. So that's fine. Right. I mean, we still got two weeks. Well, yeah, two weeks from what, yeah. yesterday before the day ID deadline. So. Yeah, also, I don't think we will adopt something before. <laughs> I don't know eight, but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm fine. As long as I'm not a blocking part here, I'm super chill. If I start to become a blocker, I'm getting nervous. So uh, that's <laughs> something I want to avoid. So um, do you want me to undo? Sorry, I had the doorbell ring. Um, do you want me to undo this 1095, 1096, 1097 change? Are uh, you asking me? Yes. Uh, my personal opinion it is is that it would be easiest to go back to the pre-merged one and I mean, uh, on a local machine, you'll sync back to the pre-merged one and then generate uh, this from uh, there uh, and then perhaps rebase them on top of the current one, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, in other words, um, I... I would not assume that those three lines is the only problem. I would assume that the whole thing is a problem and selectively, um, you know, basically undo stuff and move move everything else to the branch. And then redo a couple things like, uh, you know, if you wanted to add the references or something like that. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to <clears throat> make a, a commit that um, reverts those changes. I mean, some things are trivial, like uh, what is it, line seven, 973, which adds the period for consistency, right? You can see um, yeah. adding the periods, no problem, right? But uh, otherwise, you know, adding lines into there, I think, is part of uh, the other discussion that some of those are only referenced in the handle text, and some of them aren't referenced at all. So, so, so I have I have restored the branch, so you can see. The branch is still here. Uh, you can do that. Pull that code out. Um, so I, uh, um, it sounded like I don't know if uh, Hank or Thomas or somebody was volunteering to take an action item, or if you want me or Michael to do that. I, I'm not sure who's got the action here. So action for what exactly? For what just Michael said he wants to do, or something else? I thought you and Thomas were had some proposal before uh, about what to do that I said I was fine with if I'm remembering right. Um, and I don't know, was somebody actually volunteering to take that action or is that an ask for somebody else to do it? Like, yeah, does anyone object to me rebasing the master? I didn't know remove that. these uh, so commits. I propose that we split the two in half, including that, that not to do a rebase, but split them in two. But uh, we can also do a rebase and an addition. Uh, so it's, it will be in the end the same result. So I uh, just the, the proposal that um, they I think agreed to was to do the split in the PR and a new branch. But we can also rebase and do a half branch, so to speak. Uh, same same. Uh, there's multiple things that we could do. I don't have a strong preference between them. So. So in order because it's I more think, about how do we get uh, to an end? I'm, I'm more concerned about what what the end state is than about how we get there. So I don't care. Exactly. So in order to uh, align this with Thomas better, because I think we want to step a little bit at the original example for timestamps here uh, would be to create a PR that is a split into the old example into the new example. 
then uh, we can see it side by side and don't have to cross PR compare them. That is a little bit of a nuisance to me at least, but maybe that's just me. Maybe it's not just me. So if that is a, a floatable proposal, I would like to uh, do that. Um, Michael, are you okay with this? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, I had a quick question about the table. Could you bring up maybe the table of the um, timestamp acronyms again? I think it's in the beginning of the Appendix A. Uh, so you want to see... There's only one big table, I think. Um, <laughs> This table, yeah, that one. exactly. So, um, so there is something here that uh, that's just nitty, but I would also address because it has never addressed before something like nonce relate to nonce conveyed, something as easy as that because that's the terms we are always we are using here, and therefore I would like to uh, uh, rephrase some of the acronyms. I know it's a hassle. Um, I, I think when Eric and I, I think it was Eric, right, that did the uh, table stuff, but Eric and I went through it, we, uh, both of us liked relayed better than conveyed, because relayed only comes <sighs> up when you're not the entity that created the nonce to begin with, right? Nonce relayed is only when you're relaying somebody else's nonce, where conveyed is more generic, and where relayed is more specific. And since it's only used in a more specific case, we wanted to make it as specific as was relevant. Okay, so there is. Um, it's not sent. Right? If you look at not sent, not sent is not is not conveyed, right? Thank you. Uh, that is a very good point. Let me check this for a second. So, with uh, evidence is always relayed and never sent. I don't think so. No. It, so here, why is there no evidence sent then? Because the time isn't used for anything, and so it doesn't appear in the table. So ah. you, you might be correct that not sent. Could in theory be called nonce generated without loss of information. Mm -hmm. So it could be N S could be changed to be N G just for consistency with E G. That 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 is true. That in Maybe fact, that is I, I, yes. I would be fine changing N S to N G. As, uh, one could argue that's slightly more correct, right? But, uh, uh, I'm just I uh, was confused by the sent relate stuff, and now I was immediately re 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 um, healed uh, because you, you explained it. Yeah, so I think generation might be the, and the nonce, nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, okay. No, uh, I, I do remember why it was not sent. Okay. Um, okay. Because it's a nonce, right? It's only a one-time use thing. If it really is a nonce, right? You could in okay theoretical uh, hypothetical implementation, right? Hypothetical implementation is. Let's say I boot and I generate a pool of a thousand nonces, and then I selectively send them out one at a time across the next three days. Okay, the time that they were generated is not interesting because they're not really in use until I send them the first time. Otherwise, they're just hidden as if they weren't created. When I did the random number generator versus when I send it, it's when I send it that's when the time starts counting for security checks. Uh, for implicit timekeeping, it doesn't really matter when it was generated. Yeah. It is important yeah, yeah. when you send it out and then receive the response based on it back. That's yeah, the implicit so that, timekeeping here. Yeah, okay. So that's why we kept it as not sent and not not generated. So I, I get, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and so right now, I don't think that this, that they're that the text is broke there. So, so why yeah, is it I, I that was good. never? Sorry, uh, why is it then not evidence uh, received in comparison? Evidence received is never. It's the time window, but it's important. Yeah, because it's it's th there's already a different event for that. Um, I think it's uh, RG result generation when it appraises the evidence. Right, it doesn't matter when it was received off the wire. It's when you get around to, re to appraising. It's when you actually do your security check. I see. So the time window if you have, have to write it somewhere is before it, it's in the time is not sent to. Uh, attestation, sorry, result uh, generation. That is the time window for implicit time. Yep, and if you look at the text, that's what the text says it, when it talks about the security checks with, you know, time RG minus, you know, whatever. All those things are actually yeah, in the text. Yeah, I cannot look at the text right now. Okay, thank you. If it's in the text, I'm super happy with that. I might have uh, missed that somehow. I don't know. Thank you. That is very helpful to me. And I think Eric thought this through with you better than I tried to understand. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, Eric and I went through them in, in, in quite a detail when we were trying to sanitize the, the table before. So. I'm happy with that. Okay.
Thanks. It was not a quick question, but it was a good question for me. Thank you. Okay, no, it was a good discussion. So I, I'm glad it makes sense to you. <laughs> glad to know that's not broken. So, but it's worth checking. So, um, and so we got 10 minutes. What else do you want to do in the 10 minutes? Do you want to go back to any of my other points, or is there anything else you want to cover in the last 10 minutes? Well, the item is a little bit bigger than 10 minutes, correct? I don't know. If you, because you had the, the points three through seven, we could go through any of those, unless there's a different per question, oh. different issue that people want to talk about. I don't know if there's another one from Kathleen we haven't talked about or something. So, Yes, uh, right, correct. As it says, are there, are there volunteers? Maybe, maybe I'm going this way. Um, are there uh, volunteers to phrase Kathleen's second batch of comments into GitHub PRs and issues? It took me like, I don't know, over an hour to do that. So. I could do it again, but I'm happy if someone else is doing it. Which issues or issue ranges are we talking about? I don't know. I have not uh, dissected it. So I think it's about the same volume as the first batch. No, are there issues filed already in here on this list on the screen? No. Uh, everything not, that's filed is based on the first batch, and the second batch okay. is totally unaddressed at the moment. Okay, so we need to add another issue or two or more. Depending. Yeah, I guess the same volume. It would be APR okay. and I don't know, five to eight issues. Yes. And if you want. Yeah, that would be yeah. awesome because, uh, Thanks. yeah. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> then I can focus on the thing for remediation here with the PR uh, in um, the appendix. Okay. I'll take the action. Well, thanks, Thomas. Super nice. Cheers. Otherwise, I have not a strong preference for today. Again, I'm totally unprepared, so I'm, I'm making things <laughs> up while I go. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So I see, uh, Michael, you opened two of these. Is there either of yours that you want to talk about? Either, either the two that you opened, I don't know if those are from Kathleen, or those ones we've already talked about. So I wrote this placeholder for certain considerations for implicit trust model. Um, I haven't written any, it just, that was a placeholder to remember that by, um, mm -hmm. freshness may not be inclusive enough. Thomas suggests, there you go. Oh, okay. This was at least assigned to Thomas. So yeah. if, he has, if somebody already has the action item, then maybe we don't need to discuss it, but unless Thomas has a question. No question. Okay. I know how to fix this. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, yeah, because, uh, yeah, the ones that have no assignee are perhaps interesting to talk about. So 83, 71, 67. Ned is not on the call. I think this is, uh, okay. This Ned is said, that's to be. Fix it. Uh, I don't know how we'll fix it yet, but, uh, Meaning, I guess he's not on the call, so maybe it's better to not discuss this. But you saw uh, my response. I didn't like the term layered device, but that was like over a month ago. So, I... okay. But I'd say assign it to him for now. Um, just because he asked that, but. Uh, I don't know if we agree that something needs fixing, but if he has a pull request, we can review it. Um, I guess he's not here to talk about this one. This is, doesn't look like it's trivial either. Um, I can't tell exactly what his point is, but I this I, is this already addressed in the uh, composite device section right now. That's like which he does refer to, so I'm not sure what the gap is. 
because we already talk we already have text talking about it is from, it is from March, so we might it might have yeah. we might have just yeah included uh, it uh yeah i wonder we should add in a question about has this already been addressed in the comments or something in the latest text around you know composite devices Okay. I don't have anything else to say on this one other than I am not convinced that additional changes to the document are necessary. I mean, either it's already been addressed or uh, what's not addressed may not need to be addressed in the document, but I can't tell. Yeah, I think this is about uh, what um, if you want to annotate a transition path in as a claims, I think. So so there are some expected behavior, like this attestation result is expected to be incorporated in other evidence, or this evidence is expected to be relayed and not directly consumed. And uh, so uh, therefore, if you are the uh, address, the, 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 the target, the destination of something, uh, you can you can realize, oh, this was not for me. Uh, so I, I probably have to relay this or something like this. So I'm a first responder, so to speak, and I shoot it back to someone else. So there might be a implicit uh, a question here, and this is just me, uh, maybe maybe spitballing, um, that uh, maybe some some expected behavior of the post-processing entities is to be annotated as claims in the generated uh, um, conceptual message. I don't, I don't know. You might be right um, as far as what he's thinking. Um, Personally, I might find that more confusing than helpful if the text were to be in the document. You know, I don't think it's the job of the architecture to talk about every possible permutation of every possible way to do things. So, right, we talk about you know reference models and leave it up to actually actual protocols to define details. I'm not aware that a uh, entity is always. Uh, yeah, I don't think that the entity is always aware. At which point of time in the process of workflow it should be. So, probably just getting stuff and processing stuff. So, it's harder to make sense of that. But maybe mm -hmm. that's a semantic thing. I don't know. I, I, I have to ask that, I guess. Yeah. I said right now, my general principle is that, um, that anything that can be left to a protocol doc should be left to a protocol doc. Um, and all that's in here is things that motivate requirements for, say, the EAT document. Which is a working group document, um, and so we do put in like Michael's question about the aside that we talked about here is perfectly fair, right? Because that's kind of a clear question about whether there's a requirement on each uh, to do a particular thing. Um, I don't see um, uh, that this has a direct impact on that in any way that I understand yet, anyway. And so I think this is in the category of better left to a protocol document if there's more complexity than what's currently covered. I think the I think uh, the, the Composite device section right now is already really complicated. Um, <laughs> so that's already uh, on the verge of going overboard, in my opinion. But uh, you know, but we already have it. So I think that's where we should draw the line. Yeah, that's right from that. So well, basically, we're... top of the hour. Uh, is it worthwhile to open something else? Because I have a small yeah. ask to Dave. Uh -huh. Are you? Do you have some minutes left that you could stay on longer? Because I have to ask you a question. I think. It, 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 really. As long as I don't have the open source thing that I need to be for uh, the, the, for the Q and A for suit. So I sorry. I, at the beginning of the call, I was looking it up, and I never finished looking it up. So hold on. Oh yeah, maybe you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just in case it's in progress right now and question time is coming up in 20 minutes, so. Okay. Yeah, anybody has something very, very important to maybe put on our first spot of agenda next week, today already? 
If not, I think we can conclude this meeting. So one, one, one small thing, it doesn't, it, it's a, a request to Michael. Could you, could you please bring the point about the PII annotation that you made before on the list? Because this, I fear this says fall out on, on the requirements for the attester API. And it says that I need to provide API UX to selectively remove specific claims that are PII, you know, um, uh, relevant from the report that I'm requesting if, if that becomes a, a requirement. Please. No. Uh, it is, and so I do need to drop off because it is the one that you mentioned. Uh, ah. My the, the secure boot and over the air updates that's going on right now. So I need to flip over to there. So, okay, I'll shoot you a message. Uh, maybe we All can right. do something. Right. Yep. Bye.